Hi there, Stefan with the Chatbot's Life and Chatbot Conference. And today we're gonna to be talking about chatbot use cases. This is one of the most exciting uh, parts about chatbots and it really drives home the most valuable parts about a bot. So uh, in this uh, video, I'm gonna show you what are the top chatbot use cases and how you could leverage them in your business uh, in all the different ways because chatbots can do a lot of different things. So before we jump into the specific use cases, let's first think about what's the best way to think about use cases and what the actual value that they give customers, companies, and, and employees. So the best way to think about chatbots is that what they are essentially is they're uh, a way to automate communication uh, and also a way to automate processes. So anytime you have um, inside, of a inside of an organization, uh, communication that could be automated, a chatbot could really help in that situation. Additionally, a lot of times when we communicate, we're communicating for a reason. We have a purpose to our communication. And that purpose is usually task driven. Uh, we want to get something done. We want to get a piece of information. Uh, we have a, you know, some sort of an agenda uh, when it comes to communicating. So not only can uh, chatbots help automate the communication piece, but then later on they can also help automate the task piece. So there's basically two different types of uh, use cases. There's, cons uh, there's consumer facing use cases, and then there's backend employee facing uh, use cases. So let's jump into the consumer facing ones. So for this one, we're going to look at use cases that any organization can, um, can use. And the best way to think about this is through the customer's journey. So uh, anytime some, someone comes to your website or contacts your company, uh, a chatbot could be a part of that process. So um, as you imagine, traffic is coming in uh, to your website and to your bot, and the three different levels are awareness, desire, decision, and then purchase. So uh, on the awareness side, the most important thing that a chatbot can do is it can learn about your customer. So at the very beginning, someone comes to your website and the, and the bot could be like a website bot that comes up, or maybe they just came straight into your bot, or maybe you drove it through a, through a Facebook ad or some other kind of ad. And now, so, and now the user's inside of your bot. At this point, you really have to find out uh, why they're there and what's the best way you can help them. So at this point uh, in the process, the chatbot is, using, um, um, is, use, is mostly useful for, for gathering information and this has two really, really important value, values for you. Uh, the first is it's going to let you personalize the experience uh, for that user. So you'll know exactly uh, what that person is looking for, and then you'll be able to give it to them. Um, you can also find out things like what their price range is, what their time frame is, uh, what their priorities are, so that you can tailor fit and personalize the package as much as possible to them. Um, the other thing you're going to be able to do is that you're going to be able to reduce your ad cost. Um, and this is like a second uh, order benefit. And the reason why you could, you could uh, reduce your ad cost is because you're gonna learn so much about that specific type of customer and other customers that are very similar to them. You'll be able to market to people like them for cheaper. Um, you also know what it is exactly that's pushing their buttons uh, and getting them to purchase. Um, so we've seen an enormous amount of reduction cost with some of the projects that, that we've been associated with. Uh, and this is like for Facebook marketing uh, primarily. So next is um, once the person um, has played with, around with your bot, they've gone through your onboarding, now the next piece is um, you've given them or you've suggested something and comes the personalization. And the personalization can, can also uh, uh, put someone in an experience. Like for example, the Sephora bot literally allows you to try different shades of lipstick. Uh, on your face. And what that does is that it builds an enormous amount of desire, right? You're no longer uh, you know, trying to decide whether you want to purchase it or not. You can just uh, look at it, all of a sudden you see, oh wow, it looks great, and then you're, you're pretty much ready to buy. And so um, that is the, the most direct path uh, to decision and then purchase. But a lot of times customers will have questions. Uh, they might want to know how much it costs, uh, how soon it, it will, the item will arrive, or how soon the pro, or or they might want to know certain details of the service, and um, this is where your FAQ comes in. So a lot of these types of questions, uh, the chatbot could automatically respond. Um, these sort of uh, this sort of information is already in your website. So uh, and the reason why it's there is because uh, people find it useful. Um, 
So basically what the chatbot is doing in essence is it's making the information on your website conversational. And then what this does is it increase, uh, increases conversion rates and increases them substantially. Um, if you look at any of your website data, like if you have a really good website, maybe two or three percent of your traffic is going to convert into a sale, right? The other 97 percent most of the time might forget about you. And then you have to retarget them and spend money to bring them back to your website. Whereas with a bot, um, you can retarget them because they're already in your bot and you could send them a message the next day or the following day or so on. So you don't lose that 97 percent. You don't have to retarget that 97 percent. Uh, you could send them a message on Facebook Messengers within 24 hours. Uh, with SMS, it's uh, much, much longer. And if you collect their, their email address, uh, it's you know indefinite. So as a result of this, the conver conversion rates are a lot higher when a bot is a part of this process. And then the other things that it can do is um, it could automate certain uh, processes. So for example, a lot of times when people come to a website, they purchase something and they leave. Uh, before uh, actually buying it, before putting in their credit card information. And a bot could uh, s uh, automatically send abandoned cart reminders, for example. And, and since it's on Messenger or, or SMS, uh, the open rate is going to be a lot higher than if it's just over email. So, um, and then once they purchase, you can, you can also upsell and cross-sell. So someone buys one item and you could suggest another item. Um, and this is a really, really useful um, and it's a very, very effective way to increase revenue. Now, about 70% of people actually want to hear from their brand after they've purchased something. So this is the best, one of the best parts about a chatbot is that it allows you to follow up after the, uh, the sale. So first, you can do things like order tracking. Uh, you can also track issues and you can also track returns. So this usually takes up a lot of cost uh, for any e-commerce business or, or any type of business that's, that's selling things online, which is pretty much everyone, is customer service and returns. Um, if, you're, if your product is a little bit more complicated to use, uh, the chatbot, uh, a customer service version of the chatbot could help them with that. It could help onboard into the product. It could help onboard into the service. It could show them how to use it and how to get the most out of it. So, um, and then during this process of uh, providing customer service, your goal is to increase customer satisfaction. And um, you do that by gathering feedback and by helping them get the most value out of, that, out of your product or service. And then once you've, once, you've, once you've done all of this, as you're doing all of this, you're also learning about the habits of your customer. You're finding out um, very important insights about your product, like where people are struggling with your product or service, what people are understanding or not understanding about your product or service, um, where, where are you having drop off and where are you having the most amount of friction. And the bot will help improve your product and service. And at the same time, it'll increase customer satisfaction. And, it, and, and the end goal of this is that you build a relationship uh, with your customer and then you learn their habits and then the bot could act as this intermediary that automatically goes back to them um, and it sells and shares with them similar items that they would like uh, or items that are the next logical uh, sequence of what they would buy. Maybe, they, maybe they're buying an outfit and maybe these pair of shoes would really go. Or maybe they're buying a training of some kind and they, you know, they, they sh uh, you know, are learning like NLP level one, now they're gonna go to NLP level two, right? Usually uh, products and services have a natural progression. And with the bot, you can take them from you know, level one to level two uh, and so on. So next, let's look at how enterprises use chatbots internally. And we'll look at some of the most uh, prevalent use cases. And the best way to do this is to look at HR because HR is going to give us a lot of insight on, on how it could be used in HR. And then you can take those insights and you can apply them to any department uh, within an organization. So let's jump in and check that out next. Now let's look at the backhand use cases and the backhand use cases are much, much more popular because there's so many things organizations could do to automate processes and communication that literally uh, the sky's the limit. Uh, in fact, uh, at one point Marriott uh, was increasing the number of internal bots uh, by 85% uh, month after month after month because these bots were able to automate a lot of the tasks that they were paying people to do and then freeing those people to do 
more important things with their time. So let's jump in and let's take a look at the HR use case. And this is a really good example of what bots can do internally. And this sort of use case can be applied to many different departments uh, because all departments at the end boil down to these two things, communication and doing tasks. Um, and of course, there's also strategy decision making and the bot will definitely not be able to help you with that, but it could help you with low level uh, requirements. So um, if we think of the, uh, of the process of hiring an employee, onboarding them, uh, making sure they, that they're a really good fit with the company and then making sure they're happy, uh, we can think of this as like the employee journey. So if we look at the employee journey, uh, the first thing that happens is that an employee comes to the company and they fill out an application um, and they start the process or they talk to a recruiter uh, in some uh, shape or form, uh, they're letting the company know that they want to work there. So um, the cool thing about bots is that they're really, really helpful on this end. So uh, there's already a lot of companies that are using them. Um, and what the, what the bot does is it guides the process. It asks, you know, a lot of, a lot of the sort of questions you would see on a job application form, uh, but instead it's conversational. Um, and that increases the number of uh, applications uh, and increases uh, the amount of time it takes for them to complete it and submit it. So instead of them having to send an email and so on, it's done automatically as they see the job posting. So the, the, the process is sped up. Um, the other thing that the bot will do is it'll, it'll gather all the necessary documents. So if it needs your resume, it'll ask you to upload your resume. Then it could take that resume, it could automatically scan it and just to make sure that you're a good fit. Um, and then it could also suggest uh, other jobs to you. So, um, and this is a really, really huge second order benefit uh, for, for chatbots uh, in the HR hiring process is that a lot of times companies might get a bunch of applications for job A and maybe job A has only two uh, slots available, two positions open, and they find the, the best two uh, candidates for them. But over here they have job B that's very similar to job A. And all these people that applied for job A, a lot of the times, all the, you know, the other 100 people that didn't get job A, uh, they're gonna go work for some other company most likely. And you're gonna have to spend a, a additional resource, resources, time uh, to find candidates for job B. What the bot can do is it can suggest all these candidates in job A, hey, you would, you're a good fit for job A, but hey, would you like me to help you apply for job B, C, and D as well? And then you could automatically apply for these other positions. Um, the other thing that the bot can do is it can ask them questions. Um, and this can include things like personality tests, uh, aptitude tests, uh, and then test and, and then questions about their background and so on. So anything that's part of your uh, application process could be automated. Um, and then um, it could set up the interview, it could schedule it, uh, it could automatically send them like a, an invite. Um, with all the details. So it could automate this entire initial process. Um, and then once the employee is hired, you're going to need certain information from them, right? You're gonna need their tax documents. Uh, you're gonna to need to provide them the HR manuals and kind of get them going with your organization. So uh, these again are repetitive tasks and we see bots really helping out in this area. Um, and then when it comes to employee onboarding, um, a lot of a lot of companies spend a lot of time uh, retraining employees this over and over and over again, especially if, if a role is a high turnover role. And so automating that process is extremely valuable, right? And um, there's a number of ways you can do it. One is um, with use cases, you can have it, that, have it on a time frame. So like on day one, this is what the employee needs. Uh, he, he needs uh, to know this sort of information. Like, Anytime you're hiring an employee, they're going to need to know internal information about your, uh, about your organization uh, so they can do their job. So the, the bot could automate this process and onboard them and give them certain uh, information on day one, give them a module on day seven, ask them a couple of questions on day nine, uh, just to make sure that they're being onboarded onto the job uh, really, really well, and that they have everything they need in order to be able to do a good job. Um, the other thing that the bot can do is it could assign them tasks. Like for example, uh, complete you know, the user, the HR manual by day one and, or by, by day five, for example, and it'll send them the link, they can click on it, and then uh, once they read it, 
it'll automatically know and it'll check mark that for them. Um, the other thing that's really important for, for, for any job is that uh, the employees are continuously being trained and learning. Um, and again, this is something that uh, bots can help with. And one of the biggest problems with training and learning is that um, within 30 days, people lose almost 90% of what they learned. And so the best way to, uh, um, to learn and to ho hold on to that learning and training is to apply it. And this is something the bots can do, right? If the bot knows that you went to a conference to learn about, say, chatbots, uh, <laughs> that when you come back that it might ask you some questions, it might ask you how you're applying it in your job, just to make sure that uh, this learning is being realized through action. Um, and then it could also provide some of these training modules if you want the employees to con continuously be learning. Uh, next is uh, task assistance. So um, it could help them do their job better. It could retrieve documents for them. It could retrieve specific information for them. And then it could also help them do certain tasks. Like the best way to think about this is like uh, your, your organization already has a bunch of enterprise software and some of the software the employees don't use. Um, and if they don't use it, then it's like not that valuable. It's like losing value every time they don't use it. So what a chatbot can do uh, is you can create a language layer on top and then you can have the software uh, complete the same exact tasks that it would normally would. But instead of them having to go into a portal, uh, sign up, drag something, write something, um, and, and make these sort of things, they can just uh, tell the bot and then the bot will turn the language into an action uh, and the action will be right within the existing enterprise software. So you don't have to recreate it. You can just create a bot that sits on top of it. And uh, one of the best examples of this is RPAs, a robotic process uh, automation. Um, uh, RPAs are becoming more and more conversational. So now you can talk to the RPAs and you can tell them to do things and complete tasks for you. Uh, a really cool example of this is, the, is Chase. Um, JP Morgan uh, a few years ago created a bot called Coin, C-O-I-N, and what this bot would do is it would review uh, contracts. Uh, and it would look at the contracts that have been recently signed or that are up for signing, and it would compare them to their templates, and then it would look for errors, and in the first year, it saved J.P. Morgan Chase 360,000 hours. These are legal hours. So this is the potential of task assistant bots. Um, so, and then uh, last but not least, and maybe most important, is that the chatbot, an internal bot, can help uh, guide um, employees throughout their career path. It can, they can tell the bot what their goals are, and then the bot can give them tasks so they can uh, reach their goals. It could also gather feedback in terms of like how well they feel their job performance is or their task performance, how things are going with their team, coworkers, how good their manager or boss is, uh, and so on. So uh, this kind of gives you a pretty good overall idea of the things that chatbots can do and exactly like specifically where they can help and how. So if you have any other questions, just uh, hit me up in the comments and we'll love to answer them. And then for more information like this, just make sure you subscribe and follow. And then you could also uh, check us out at chatbotslife.com and the chatbot conference. So have a good rest of your day.